Hi guys, my name is Anilula and I share years of personal experience in the fashion industry, giving you key insights into buying and merchandising skills. So, today I'm going to be sharing how to analyse sales. So, moving forward from my last video where I shared how to build a range, all of those styles that would have been developed off of the range plan after they've been developed and they've made it to stores, we need to analyse how those styles have performed because we need to know which styles are the most profitable for us, which styles are the best sellers, and that's how we do that when we analyse our sales. So this would typically happen in our trade meetings where we analyse most of our sales, and that happens usually on a Monday. So Monday in the buying and merchandising department is trade day. And we look at nothing else but trade because we really need to analyse ourselves and understand where the best sellers are and where the stock position is and uh, what we're going to do about this information. So all of our actions. So I'll show you that in this video. So... This would have been our range plan where all of our styles would have been developed and then moving over, these styles all get thrown onto a sales sheet. And again, I've just drawn up a mock version. So this is just what it would look like, just like the key elements, but it would just have a load more styles. So this is only like five or six styles. It would literally be a long sales sheet with all of our styles for the whole department and we would just literally look at all of that information. So the main elements on a sell sheet that as a buying a merchandising team, what you're looking for are three main things. So you want to know, first of all, what the trading stance is. You want to know if we're selling full price right now or if we're on promotion or if we've got some kind of offer on. Are these, sell are these styles all um, you know on promotion or what like what is the trading stance secondly you want to know what the sales are and we split sales by cash and units so we want to know how much cash a style has taken and we want to know how many units have sold in that style and then thirdly we want to know what the stock position is so trading stance sales and stock are like the key elements of any sales sheet and in a trade meeting that's mainly what you need to be reporting so in the buying and merchandising team anyone who's you know doing the trade meeting or presenting those are the main things they need to be covering in in any meeting really so we'll go through it and so I've colour coded them into their particular categories just for us to understand what we're looking at so the first thing is in blue. And everything I've got here in the blue um, section here is just the description of the style really. So what department it's in, what category it's under, the style name and then the colour. So those are the main elements of, a, of any style. You just want to know which category it falls under, tops, trousers, coats, or you know women's wear or men's wear or you know we even sometimes split it into brands you know you want to know which brand it's under and all of those little subcategories would go here and we just know what that style belongs to because then as an overall picture we want to know which department has done the best which category has done the best is it tops that's done the best okay which top has done the best is it you know dresses that's done the worst okay which dress is like really bad so that that that's how we really like get to the bottom of our information and it will be in here where we'll be able to like summarize all of that. So what I've got here next is in the green section and that would be where our trading stance information is. So we have the first column which shows your full price and then we have current selling price so if those two prices are different that means that that style is on promotion or something and then we've got a markdown percentage column which shows us by which percentage that style is marked down or even on promotion so for this particular sales sheet we can see that these two styles are on 20 percent markdown and that looks like they both belong to these two, which are both our coats. 
So we could understand from this sales sheet that coats are on 20% markdown, you know, and that's how we understand this information now. Now you can see how we're beginning to get into what is on this sell sheet and what the trading stance is. So that's the first thing that we, we've gathered from this. And then moving forward, we've got the orange section, which um, is your sales information. So all of this is your sales information. And um, as I mentioned, we have sales categorized in cash and in units. So um, we want to know who is the highest cash taker out of all of these styles, who's taken the most cash. And out of these, it looks like coats, the bell sleeve coat in green, this style has taken the most cash on 17,000. We would say 17K. So um, that's great. That's another thing we've determined. So we've determined that um, 20% markdown on coats is doing well for us because it's driving sales on that style because it's made our highest cash taker. It's given us 17K on coats. So uh, moving forward from understanding those two elements, we've, we've gained another piece of information. Our bell sleeve coat is the highest cash taker. We then want to go forward and know where is that uh, cash getting taken from? Because we have our total sales and then we have online sales and store sales. So here it looks like it's mainly coming from stores because stores is on 10K. So we now know that our promotion is doing really well in stores because it's driven our highest cash taker, the bell sleeve coat, to be um on 10k alone in stores which is which is good and then we look at our units so total sales units is 550 units and we can see that 350 of that is coming from stores so as we know stores is taking a lot and then the yellow section is where we show our stock. So I've just color coded these just so we know what we're looking at. It would not usually be color coded, but it just helps us understand what we're looking at. So now we're looking at stock information. Stock again, we're going to look at it in terms of value or cash, and then in terms of units, because it's good to know how many units are sitting behind something, because if we can say, that there's you know 17k worth of stock or something that doesn't tell us how much of it is actually available it could only be like three units so we need to know well that would be really expensive but you get what i mean so um our uh, total stock um for our highest cash taker let's look at that bell sleeve coat is on 14k so we've still got some decent stock behind it but again we need to look at the units so let's go over to our total stock units our total stock units is 450 units so we've got quite a lot of um, units behind that but remember we've sold um, 550 this week alone so that means that we've only got really less than a week's worth of stock left for that style so even though it sounds like we've got 450 units so much we can sell that in a week because we sold it this week so that actually is quite low stock behind it and so that's how we begin to analyze our stock position. Stock position becomes really important in relation to sales because as much as we've sold something really well, we want to know that we're stocked well behind it. We can sell more of it. And if something isn't very well stocked like this coat, then we need to run back and figure out what we're going to put in replace of it or when we're next going to be able to restock that style. So. so Sales and stock go hand in hand. So in relation to how well a style is doing sales wise, we need to know how well or badly it's stocked so we can do something about it to maintain the sales. 
And then you can see how circular that becomes because then that's how we'll go back to the range plan and then we'll sort out rebuying it, sort out some more units, go back to our supplier and our factory and do those costs and calculations all over again. So that's how we just keep the stock moving, keep it going. And so there's a quick formula that we do use instead of running through back and forth all this information to understand our stock in relation to uh, sales, we have a formula called our cover. That's in this column here on the end. And what cover is, is just a quick formula. It's our stock divided by our sales. And then that gives us our cover for the week. And so the way we would use this term is we would say, for example, on that coat, we would say uh, the bell sleeve coat is on 0.8 weeks cover, which means we've not even got a week's worth of stock left of it. Um, it's probably going to sell out by before the end of next week. So uh, we can pretty much count on that style selling out, which is great. But it would be great if we had restocked it or if we, or if we had some commitment units, which is something that we know is on its way in, like it's already been ordered by the factory. They already know they need to remake it and they'll order it in. So this is something um, you could possibly anticipate it's going to sell out and then you act on that weeks and weeks in advance. You know, to reorder something on the week that it's sold out is probably a bit late and short notice. Um, these are things we anticip anticipate ahead of time. And then there's another formula we use that is called the sell-through rate percentage, which we have right on the end there. And our sell-through rate percentage just tells us where we are right now, how much of the overall bought stock have we sold through. And we can see on that coat, we've sold through 55% of that stock. So half of that stock is already gone. It's going to be all the way gone by the end of the week due to the cover being on 0.8. And so, you know, that markdown percentage um, on 20% has really driven that to sell. So um, that's just a, a way we would, we would analyse our sales. So once we've looked at all of this information, just literally looked across this sheet and had a quick look at this um, information, we would gather all of this information and put it on something like a trade analysis chart, something a bit more friendly. And that's what we would use to present with in our trade meeting. So I'm just gonna show you how that would look. Um, it would look something like this. So this is a trade analysis chart. It's a lot easier to read than it looks. It's, <laughs> it looks a bit intimidating, but it's just really simple to just like get your, you know, your totals down. So it would start at the top, you would literally have your total departmental takings, and then you would go down by category, as you can see here, and you can see how we put it all in order. So it's like, it's matched it all up for us. And literally the way you would run a trade meeting is whoever's turn it is to present in trade, would read all of this information out to our team, telling us which category has done the best, um, who is the highest cash taker, and all of those kinds of things. Um, I've presented myself in many of trades. It's If you get used to it, it's not that difficult. And then you come together as a team and decide on your actions. So actions following from any weekly trades can be anything from literally like we need to push more stock into stores. Like literally if we've seen our warehouse stock and our store stock, maybe it's we've got too much stock in the warehouse. It needs to start pushing out. Or it's like we're selling out of one of our best sellers. We need to go back and restock. All of those kinds of actions, all of those kinds of uh, conversations happen in our trade meetings. And that's just a little bit about how to analyse your sales.